Today I'd like to talk to you about the function of the ZW209FP. This particular valve is a pilot operated pressure reducing valve for use in fire protection systems. Now, I want you to think of this valve in two distinctly different ways. When you look at the main valve itself, it's a diaphragm actuated valve, I want you to think of that valve as being the strength of the system. It's the brawn. It's the strongest part of the system. It's what actually controls the opening and closing of the flow. On the other hand, when you're looking at the copper tube, this is referred to as the pilotry. I want you to think of the direct acting PRV in the copper tube as the brains of the system. It's what's actually doing the thinking. So this particular valve is a cutaway. Let me go ahead and turn it around and let you see the inside of the diaphragm actuated valve. Diaphragm actuated valves, if I plumb my incoming water to both the top of the diaphragm and also into the valve itself, the diaphragm actuated valve would remain in a closed position. It does so due to the differences in the cross-sectional area of the diaphragm chamber versus the plunger. So to give you somewhat of a generic example, if my plunger were to have six square inches of cross-sectional area, my diaphragm would have a greater area and that would tend to be about 10 square inches. So to give you a hypothetical of how that would work, if I put 100 PSI into the valve, and again remember I have my inlet water plumbed into the valve but also to the top of the diaphragm chamber, 100 PSI coming in would result in an opening force of about 600 PSI. Conversely, that same 100 PSI on top of the diaphragm would be yielding a closing force of 1000 PSI. So hence again, the 1000 is going to win, it's greater than the 600, it's going to hold that diaphragm actuated valve in the closed position. The only way that the diaphragm actuated valve is going to open up is if I relieve the pressure on top of the diaphragm. And we do that by use of the pilot itself. Now once again, in a pilot operated pressure reducing valve, the pilot control itself is a small direct acting PRV and it's what's doing the sensing of the downstream pressure. It's what tells the main diaphragm actuated valve to open and close. So let's go ahead and set up a hypothetical here so you can see how this valve would work in the field. Suppose I have this plumbed into a, pressure, uh, into a fire protection system and I need to reduce the pressure. Let's say I have approximately 200 coming in and I need to reduce to 100. I'm going to adjust my direct acting PRV such that I yield 100 PSI on the downstream side. And with the system fully pressurized, both the diaphragm actuated valve and my small direct acting PRV are going to be in the closed position. Now, if we have events occur, let's say a fire occurs in that building, as soon as one sprinkler head opens up, I'm going to have a slight drop in my downstream pressure. When I have that occur, the small direct acting PRV senses that drop in pressure and it opens up to try to satisfy that demand. Well, when it does so, it now allows all of the fluid on top of the, the diaphragm to begin to be evacuated to the downstream portion of the piping. When that occurs, the diaphragm actuated valve begins to open up also. So let me repeat that again. I've got my system fully pressurized. 200 coming into the valve, I'm yielding 100 on the outlet side. A fire occurs, one sprinkler head opens up, maybe even more, but at least just one. As that occurs, I have a slight drop in my downstream pressure. My direct acting PRV will sense that drop in pressure and it will open up to try to satisfy that demand. When it does so, it now allows the fluid on top of the diaphragm to begin to move to the downstream portion of the piping. Thus, my diaphragm actuated valve begins to open also. Now, normally in a situation like that, you would think, well, since the small direct acting PRV exhibits a fall-off characteristic, meaning the more water that it flows, the lower the pressure becomes, you would think the pilot operated valve would want to do that also. Well, it doesn't because we do uh, one additional step here. We add what we call a restriction fitting. This restriction fitting prevents the cover from becoming reflooded, thus trying to shut the valve down when I have that demand downstream, but also that re restriction fitting prevents the valve from exhibiting that fall-off characteristic. So that's the beautiful thing about a pilot-operated valve. Their downstream pressure is held constant regardless of flow rate or regardless of inlet pressure fluctuations. I hope I gave you a brief explanation of how this valve worked, but if it didn't quite come through or you have questions, call us here at Zern Wilkins. That's what we're here for. We want to help you understand this product. Uh, we have a full staff online to do that, including myself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked our video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
For more product information or to speak to a customer care representative, please visit our website at CERN.com.